Good afternoon, I'm Mayra Rodriguez. This is News Feed at noon on BNC, the Billionaire News Channel, where we give you a rundown of today's biggest stories. We begin with a standoff in Davao City between members of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ and police trying to serve the arrest warrant against their leader, Apollo Kibaloy. The Philippine National Police denies locking down entry points into the city to stop people from joining the pro Kibaloy protest. The PNP also says its men exercised maximum tolerance on the demonstrators who have intentionally blocked the national highway in front of the KOJC compound. A member of the group died of a heart attack during a police operation early Saturday. Kibaloy is facing charges of human trafficking and child abuse. Let's get the latest on the standoff in Davao City. On the scene is Abante Radio reporter Edith Isidro. Edith, go ahead. Thank you so much. My maid, yeah, the police regional office 11 would like to impute the post from the CSME 9 News Channel claiming that the Philippine National Police 11 locked down the entry point of Davao City to stop people from joining the Kingdom of Jesus members in the rally. Quoting that just in the lockdown ang lahat na entry point ng Davao City by uh, PNP upang mapigilan ang pakikisa ng ibang Pilipino sa protestang nagaganap harap ng TOJC compound. And for, uh, first and foremost, the PNP, especially the PRO 11, has never implemented any lockdown along the national highway or plan to do so. Instead, it was the members of the POGC who intentionally blocked the national highway in front of the POGC compound. And then, in fairness to them, they were able to secure their rally permits from the city government of Davao, allowing them to conduct a prayer rally at the, instead of the imminent attack of the different police facility activities and conducted over the past weeks or months. Nonetheless, uh, the PNP 11 is calling for everyone's attention not to easily give in and believe the accusations that are being thrown at the PNP. And uh, the PNP is acknowledged that ECMI is aligned with the POGC. However, we hope that he will practice the essence of true journalism, which is pursued of truth through accurate, unbiased, and ethical reporting. As of now, the PNP is forming its job, and we, uh, the PNP is uh, those who obstruct the dome, the thing will grant us the chance to pin or uh, finish the task uh, more quickly by non humbering the police operation that they are carrying out. And yet, so well, ang sabi ng PNP, yung mga nagpoprotesta ang nagblock doon sa National Highway, ano, hinarangan nila. Doon naman sa sinasabing naghagis ng tear gas ang police. The PNP denied this already, pero ano ang sinasabi nila? Ano ba talaga ang nangyari? Uh -oh. Ay, as far as the PNP is concerned, uh, nak uh, nakausap po natin ang uh, PNP spokesperson, Major Patuin uh, De La Rey, na sila po ang uh, member po ng KOGC ang nauna. Uh, kaya po ang uh, marami po anim na police uh, officer ang uh, dinala sa hospital inside sa Kamkat Kipan po. Mm -hmm. And we might be looking at a long-drawn standoff here dahil hindi aalis ang PNP dyan ano, hanggat sa makuha nila si Kibaloy. Ano naman ang plano ng KOJC members hanggang kailan daw sila magpoprotesta dyan? As far as KOJC is concerned, uh, ayun sa kanila po, mula po kaninang umaga narinig ko natin na hindi po sila aalis unless aalis ang PNP as long as nandyan yung mga polis and then, hindi sila alis sa kanilang uh, tinatayuan ngayon. Alright, maraming salamat, Edith Isidro of Abante Radio. One of the lawyers of Pastor Apollo Kibuloy insists the PNP cannot stay at the KOJC compound in Davao City. Police have been there since this weekend to serve the warrant of arrest against Kibuloy. Speaking to BNCs at the forefront, Attorney Ferdinand Topasho said the PNP taking over the premises is illegal. He also blames President Bongbong Marcos for the standoff. There is a warrant, no doubt about that. But, uh, and, uh, but we all know as lawyers the legal principles involved in serving a warrant of arrest. 
meaning that uh, of course you can go into any property if you have uh, good grounds to believe that a person who is uh, subject of a warrant is there but you cannot stay there you cannot take full possession of that property definitely the uh, command that they will not leave until they find Pastor Kibuloy is uh, totally illegal. And I think a, a lot of uh, people have already weighed in on that. So, uh, and I, I don't think that the president can escape responsibility for this uh, brazen abuse of power because uh, he cannot be unaware of what is happening in the Davao City. It's a matter of that has uh, attained wide publicity and as chief executive under whose office is the uh, uh, Department of the Interior and Local Government, uh, which in turn has uh, command of the police, then uh, I think uh, the most uh, prudent uh, course of action for the president to take is call off his dogs, so to speak, and let uh, the uh, regular course of things uh, uh, go ahead. The ongoing protests by KOJC members are also affecting flights to and from Davao City. Budget carrier Cebu Pacific warns of flight changes due to the standoff. Passengers are advised to check their flight status via the airline's website and ensure their contact details are updated in case there are further notifications from Cebu Pacific. For passengers who wish to postpone their flights from Davao, Cebu Pac is offering flexible options including free rebooking and a travel fund. Another confrontation in the West Philippine Sea, the Philippine government condemns what it says is China's latest aggression in disputed waters. Over the weekend, a Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources vessel encountered at least eight Chinese Coast Guard ships while on a humanitarian mission to Escoda Shoal. The boat was rammed and hit with water cannons. Manila says Beijing's actions posed serious risks to the Filipino crew and the fishermen they were meant to serve. The Philippines also urges China to stop provocations that destabilize peace and security in the region. President Bongbong Marcos leads the commemoration of National Heroes Day. Marcos attended the flag-raising and wreath-laying ceremony at the Libingan ng Mga Bayani in Taguig. In his speech, Marcos called on Filipinos to be heroes in their own right. He also paid tribute to modern-day heroes, including the Philippine Navy and the Coast Guard. Let our commemoration today teach us the importance of not only remembering our heroes, but also of continuing to perpetuate their legacy of patriotism and of nobility. After all, heroism is not confined to just the history books. Heroism also lies in him and her who are virtuous, in those who are compassionate, in those who are just. We have seen how it resides in the heart of a modern-day Filipino, fearless, amidst the continuing adversities and perils that the world has unleashed, geopolitical conflicts, diseases, climate change. We see it in the Navy and the Coast Guard who defend our maritime borders, in the soldiers who protect our citizens, and in the healthcare workers who put their lives at stake for others. We also see it in the overseas Filipinos who leave the comfort of home to support their loved ones in the ordinary workers who turn the gears of our economy, and in the farmer and fisher folk who increase our agricultural output to put food on every Filipino's table. More Kadiwa stores will be available to the public. The Department of Agriculture announces expanding the Kadiwa ng Pangulo program to the Visayas and Mindanao. Agriculture Secretary Francisco Chiu Laurel says at least 60 Kadiwa stores will open next month. This is to provide access to affordable agricultural products like the 29 peso per kilo rice. He says the ultimate goal is to at least have one store in each of the country's 1,500 municipalities. Apart from helping consumers, Kadiwa also provides farmers cooperatives and associations a ready market where they directly sell their produce. Ignoring your boss outside of work hours, now legal in Australia. This and other stories when Newsfeed at Noon returns.
We're back. You're still watching Newsfeed at noon. Migrant worker Secretary Hans Leo Kakdak assures full government assistance for nine Filipino workers rescued from a human trafficking scheme in Laos. The nine who returned home over the weekend are the first among 73 other Filipinos rescued from syndicates at the Golden Triangle Special Economic Zone. The workers were promised work as customer service representatives in Thailand but ended up being forced to work as scammers. Turning now to the crackdown on Pogos, the Philippine Senate set to take custody of the sister of dismissed Bamban Mayor Alice Go. The National Bureau of Investigation will also turn over Cassandra Leong the, to the custody of the House of Representatives. Agatha Gregorio is on the scene for more. Agatha. My Sheila Go and Cassandra Lee Ong are now being transferred to the Senate and the House of Representatives, respectively. They're coming from the National Bureau of Investigation in Quezon City. Both were recently arrested in Indonesia after immigration officials coordinated with foreign counterparts on the situation surrounding the two. Go was issued an arrest order by the Senate, while the House issued its own to Ong, both for absence and hearings on illegal Philippine offshore gaming operators. The two were also placed under arrest by Philippine authorities upon their arrival Thursday for immigration and passports violations and other offenses. The DOJ says the two may face more serious charges in connection with Philippine offshore gaming operations. Authorities, meanwhile, continue to hunt for former Bamban Mayor Alice Guo and her supposed brother Wesley Guo. They believe Alice Go is still in Indonesia. Back to you, Mai. Thank you, Agatha. They're reporting. Ignoring your boss outside of work hours just became legal in Australia. That's all thanks to the right to disconnect law taking effect today. Under the measure, Australian workers are given free pass to shun work calls and emails once they step out of the office. The law is meant to restore boundaries that were blurred during the COVID-19 pandemic when the work-from-home setup became the norm. To be clear, the new law won't stop bosses from badgering you, but Australian workers are free to leave them on read. Talk about work-life balance. The latest now on the race for the White House Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris raising $540 million a little over a month since launching her bid. Her campaign fund saw an $82 million surge during last week's Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Harris became a candidate for president on July 21 when U.S. President Joe Biden stepped aside. Since then, her Republican rival Donald Trump has struggled to regain media attention and momentum. The founder and CEO of messaging app Telegram arrested in France. Pavel Durov was detained after his private jet landed in Paris Saturday. His arrest was part of an investigation on the alleged lack of moderation on the app, which authorities say leads to fraud, drug trafficking and even acts of terrorism. In a statement, Telegram said they follow European Union laws and they are moderating content based on industry standards. It also insists Durov has nothing to hide, calling it absurd to hold a platform or its owner responsible for abuses committed on the app. Good news for motorists here at home uh, as a huge rollback in pump prices are expected this week. After a round of increases last week, Uni Oil says diesel may go down by as much as 2 pesos per liter Tuesday. Gasoline prices are also set to drop by 1 peso to 1 peso and 20 centavos per liter. The budget department is confident the Philippines can achieve a, an A credit rating within the administration of President Bongbong Marcos. This after debt watcher Moody's affirmed the country's BAA2 rating last week, citing economic reforms, fiscal consolidation efforts, and better macroeconomic fundamentals. The DBM says Moody's affirmation is a positive development and only makes the government more determined to get an A credit grade. The Philippines has held a BAA2 rating, a notch above minimum investment grade, for 10 years now. 
This means the country has moderate credit risk. While securing an A rating means obligations are subject to low credit risk. A stunning development in the commercial space race as two Boeing Starliner astronauts stranded in the International Space Station are set to be rescued by the firm's rival, SpaceX. Butch Wilmore and Sunny Williams flew to the ISS aboard the Starliner capsule back in June. It was supposed to be just an eight-day test mission until they encountered a series of technical glitches. Starliner is expected to return to Earth uncrewed in early September. As for Wilmore and Williams, NASA expects them to return in February on a SpaceX aircraft that's due to launch next month as part of a routine mission. When we come back, we'll show you a new trend that's creeping into Singapore's food scene. Newsfeed returns after the break. Welcome back to Newsfeed at Noon. Novak Djokovic is on a quest for a fifth U.S. Open title and his 25th Grand Slam overall. The Serbian continued his training well into the eve of the tournament as he faces Moldovan world number 138 Radu Albert Monday. Djokovic, who won the gold at the Paris Olympics, trained on the Arthur Ashe Stadium court, much to the delight of fans. The 2024 Paralympic Games torch is now in France. The torch relay began on Saturday in Stoke Mandeville, England, the birthplace of the Paralympics. British athletes then carried the torch through the Channel Tunnel before handing it over to French competitors. The flame will make its way to Paris where it will be used to light the Paralympic cauldron during the opening ceremony on August 28th. Heads up for those who plan to travel to the European Union as the bloc will soon remove physical passport stamping for short-stay visa and visa-exempt travelers. Starting this November, the EU will implement an automated biometric system which will register visitors' names, fingerprints, facial images and other information when entering the bloc's border. Authorities hope the so-called entry-exit system will speed up processes for travelers and improve security in the EU. The new policy has suffered a series of delays and was originally due to launch in 2022. The Stonehenge is perhaps one of the most visited tourist attractions in the UK. Now, a new geological analysis has revealed one of its slabs, called the Altar Stone, took a remarkable journey to be part of this ancient monument, a discovery that has left researchers stunned. A new discovery concerning Britain's famous Stonehenge monument has stunned researchers. Its altar stone, weighing an estimated six tons, travelled roughly 435 to 465 miles in ancient times, from Scotland all the way to England's Salisbury Plain. New research, published in the journal Nature, was carried out by scientists at Aberystwyth University, UCL, Curtin University and the University of Adelaide. However you brought it, whether you brought it down by boat or whether you brought it over land, yeah, but it must have taken a huge effort to do that. Nick Pearce is a geologist and co-author of the study. And it sits right at the centre of the Stonehenge Monument. It's the bit that you stand on to watch the sunrise between the other stones over there. Uh, so it's right at the middle. So it must have been placed there as an important stone. The origin and purpose of the altar stone have been among the mysteries of the megalithic monument. For the past century, the common belief had been that it had been sourced from Wales, like other large components at the UNESCO World Heritage Site. To find out the age of the stone, researchers studied its geochemical fingerprint. It's a microanalysis technique. You fire a very focused laser beam on um, the minerals in the rock and it vaporizes them. You analyze the vapor and you analyze the uranium concentrations and the lead concentrations. 
they found that the minerals of the Ulster Stone are a perfect match for bedrock found in northeastern Scotland. And you analyse 50 or 60 minerals and you can get this fingerprint of the different ages of those minerals in the rock and that's the characteristic that tells us this is Orcadian based. It's that age, that suite of ages from those individual minerals in the, in the grains in the Ulster Stone. No stone from any other monument dating back to that time period is known to have been transported so far. Researchers say this feat, perhaps by both land and sea, suggests a degree of societal organisation among Britain's Neolithic communities unexpected for the time when it was moved, thought to have been about 4,600 to 2,500 years ago. The precise location where the altar stone was sourced remains unknown. But researchers say the challenge of taking such a massive cargo such a long distance underscores its importance to Stonehenge's builders. The monument was built in multiple stages over 500 years or so, starting about 3000 BC. It remains a site of fascination and mystery over its exact purpose, drawing tourists from around the world. A new trend is creeping into Singapore's vibrant food scene. More restaurants are putting insects on their menu after Singapore's food agency marked them safe for human consumption. Take a look. Fancy salad garnished with black field crickets or satay chicken skewers with some extra protein. This Singapore restaurant is putting insects on their menu. It's among a growing list of food establishments looking to do so after a recent government approval marked insects as safe for human consumption. So how do insects taste? A table of four was invited to the House of Seafood restaurant before the official launch of the menu. It's just like the texture of your eating dry shrimp. If you think dry shrimp is pleasant, then it is. If you eat it with an eye closed, you can tell it. It's a cricket. In terms of taste, meat tastes better, but I'm willing to try eating it occasionally because it's a novelty to me. Singapore approved 16 species of insects for consumption, including crickets and grasshoppers. They have been proven to be a rich source of fat, protein, vitamins, fiber and minerals, according to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. Food security researcher Paul Teng calls the latest policy a step in the right direction. Countries like Thailand, Cambodia and Laos have had many, many generations of consumers eating insects. So there's no yuck factor anymore. It's part of their normal diet. Now we need to build it in Singapore because we don't have a history of eating insects. At House of Seafood, founder Francis Ng says the initial response from customers has been positive. The restaurant can officially launch the menu for sale when importers get paperwork from the Singapore Food Agency. Currently importing from Thailand, he hopes to farm his own edible insects in the future. Vertical farming for these insects is good, especially organic. Whatever I left in my restaurant vegetable, I can leave it to them. See? That will be the best way. So I know what the insect is eating. I hope this can be a halal segment also. But now I haven't halal yet. Because the insect, what they're eating, they still don't know. And those are the news this hour. I'm Mai Rodriguez. Stay tuned to BNC for more Top of the Hour news on Free TV Channel 31 and also on our website bnc.ph. Billionaire News Channel, always on top.